This is the P-61, called the Black Widow. She's well-named because she packs four caliber 50 machine guns and four 20-millimeter cannon. An obituary notice goes with each bite. Those twin engines will carry her fast enough to catch up with almost anything in the sky. And she's maneuverable, as a fighter should be. Very easy to handle. She stalls, takes off, and lands at low speeds. Getting checked out on her is a pleasure. The Black Widow flies the skies in three sleek models. First, the YP-61, the earliest model of this ebony killer. Then the P-61A, the first model to go into combat service. And finally, the P-61B, the newest combat version. Let's watch this pilot learning his stuff on a P-61A. The first thing to do is familiarize yourself with a cockpit. Learn where all the controls and gauges are located. The TO for the airplane is a big help. Diagrams and photographs make it easy for you to get to know the ship. After a couple of hours of study, you are able to pick out the controls and gauges without the loss of a second. And with your eyes shut. That's important because you can't afford to waste time in this fast twin-engine job. And there's no co-pilot around to help you. You're going up for a ride, just to get the feel of the ship. But first, you have to check the airplane, thoroughly. That's your best guarantee for living to a ripe old age. Like most airplanes equipped with tricycle landing gear, the 61 has a nose gear towing pin. Check it, as the nose wheel may shimmy on takeoff and become damaged. Check the nose wheel pin cap. Be sure it's on tight. Then check the rest of the landing gear for inflation of the tire and general condition. The red mark shows whether the tire is slipped on the rim. The strut ought to be extended about four inches. And another item not to be forgotten is the pressure in the emergency landing gear system. There's a gauge in each wheel well. It should show 700 pounds per square inch for the nose gear. Repeat the same inspection on the other two wheels. No cuts or bruises. Treads okay. No slippage. Strut clean and extended around four inches. And the emergency pressure? 750 pounds per square inch for the main landing gear. Now to give the exterior of the plane a general going over. Skin's all right. No loose rivets or dents. Antenna mounted securely. De-icer boots okay. No rips or places where oil or gasoline has been spilled. Gun bay doors tight. Control surfaces in good shape. All hatches and doors must be closed and locked. Otherwise, they'll blow open and probably off when the plane's in the air. So each one should be checked. The radar operator's top hatch, rear entrance door. Now you can get into the cockpit, but you have to climb right out again through the top hatch. Careful not to step on any plexiglass. There's one thing more to check outside the airplane. The gas tank filler caps. Two on each side, and oil cap. Make sure they're fastened tightly in place. Here's an old story, but a wise one. Form 1A. Check and sign for red diagonals. Turn on the circuit breakers behind the gunner's seat. And make sure the gunner's escape hatch is closed and locked. From now on, you are in command of the airplane. What would you do now? Well, you know the answer to that from studying the tech order. Turn on the generators. Then more circuit breakers, the ones for the starters and fuel booster pumps. 
and the light circuit breakers. Now look around the cockpit to see if everything is in order. Nothing loose. No tools or papers to foul up the controls. Instruments okay. The controls, and that includes the throttles, are locked. Unlock and try them out. Operate the rudders, elevators. Put ailerons through their complete range. Notice that those ailerons are unusual? They're the spoiler type, especially effective at high speeds. The P-61 is the only airplane in the Army Air Forces that has them. Controls are all okay. See if all the controls and switches are set properly. Open throttles one-fourth to one-third. Prop control switches in automatic. Feathering switches normal. Test the prop circuit breakers to make sure the buttons are in. Check fuel in all tanks. Fuel valves set to outboard tanks. Crossfeed, which supplies both engines from one tank, off. Air pressure for the emergency brakes ought to be 425 to 450 pounds per square inch. Check the clock against your watch and the altimeter. Oxygen pressure, 425 pounds per square inch. Oxygen regulator to auto mix on. Test the trim tabs. If they're in good working order, set them for takeoff. Now the instructor is ready to take over. While the ground crew pulls props through 12 blades, set the superchargers at neutral. And throttles one fourth to one third open. Adjust both mixture controls to idle cutoff. Props at full increase RPM. Check to see that the props are clear. Then turn on the battery switches. On the P61A, there are two individual battery switches and a master battery switch. The master switch on the ignition unit is for ignition only. Turn booster pumps to low. Carburetor air cold. Oil shutters one-third open. Make sure all cowl flaps are open and the intercooler flaps closed. Automatic pilot oil pressure off. Make sure that the VHF switches are off. Check carburetor air filter. Turn on master ignition switch and the right switch to both. Energize the starter and then prime the engine in the last five seconds of energizing. Since a putt-putt is furnishing your power, you should energize for no longer than 10 seconds before flipping the switch to mesh. If you are using the battery, the maximum energizing period would be 20 seconds. Don't energize beyond those limits or you'll damage the starter. When the putt-putt is being used, only your main battery switch should be on. Turn on the other switches when the crew chief disconnects the putt-putt. Adjust your mixture control to auto-rich. Close the throttle to run your engine as slowly as possible until oil pressure is indicated. As soon as oil pressure shows, I to between 1,000 and 1,200 RPM to prevent fouling of the plugs as a consequence of prolonged idling. Now we're ready to run through the same procedure for the left engine. between 600 and 700 RPM until the oil pressure gauges indicate a steady pressure. The cold oil pressure will go up to 150 or 200 pounds until the oil temperature gets to 40 or 50 degrees centigrade. Keep the prop governor in high RPM. Turn the fuel booster pumps off. Your fuel pressure should be between 15 and 17 pounds. When the oil temperature gets to about 40 degrees centigrade, open the oil cooler flaps about one third. Keep the engine cowl flaps open. Operate the cowl flaps and intercooler flaps, watching them from the window.
operate the oil cooler flaps and check the gauge. Check both hydraulic pressure gauges. Make your interphone check and see that all entrance hatches are closed and locked. Okay to taxi to runway 29. Use taxi strip directly in front of you. Runway 29, roger. for taxiing as little as possible. This holds good for any two-engined airplane. And when you want to turn, use your outboard engine. Always taxi with your flaps up 